Greetings, all of you lovely believers. I am Jung Jae Sung. Today, we'll go over introductory level lesson four, the parable of the tree and the bird. Today's meaning of tree and bird will continue from the last lesson on seed and field. Let's clearly understand today's message and be members who believe in heaven. The main verse will be from Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 to 32. Let's read the verse together. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. I'll briefly explain the main passage. The main passage is about heaven, which Jesus spoke as a parable 2,000 years ago. What does it say? It is about the smallest of seeds, a mustard seed, that is planted in a field and grows into a tree. There is a branch on this tree, and the bird comes to perch on the branch. This is a description of heaven. Looking at it literally as a text, it can't be heaven. So let's think of it as a picture. There's a seed that grows into a tree, and the bird perches on it. Even in this picture, we can't see heaven. This is because it was spoken as a parable. In order to perceive the meaning of tree and bird, you must first remember what seed and field meant. The seed is the word, and the field is a person's heart. The seed is planted in the field, and the word is planted in a person's heart. This content also has to grow in our hearts, just like a tree grows. We also need to find out what this bird represents. Let's find the reality of what tree and bird is. A physical seed allows us to grow physically. But since the word is a spiritual seed, when it enters our hearts, what does it grow into? What is being reborn? It can't be our outer self, but it's allowing our inner self to be reborn and to grow. Therefore, the spiritual meaning of the tree is a person's inner person who is being spiritually reborn by the seed. Not the outer person, but the inner person. Even in the world, people say that a child is like a tree. They don't mean a real tree, but they're merely borrowing the characteristics of a tree and making an expression. Physical seed allows physical things to grow, but what is growing and being reborn when the spiritual seed enters our hearts? Our inner person is growing and being reborn. That is why the parable of the tree is an inner person who is being reborn by the seed, that is, the word. Obviously, a literal bird can't come into this inner person, correct? But if the inner person is born by the seed of the word, what comes to perch like a bird? This bird is a spirit that enters an inner person. The reality of the parable of bird is a spirit. Shall we take a look at the logic of nature? A bird perches on a grown tree. This means that the spirit dwells in an inner person that is reborn through the seed of the word. We just realized the meaning of tree and bird. Now, we'll see if this is true or not through the word of God. We'll begin by using God's word to explain tree. First, the parable refers to a spiritual tree. But in order to perceive the spiritual meaning of tree, we must know the characteristics of a tree, right? A physical tree grows from a seed. There's no way a tree can grow without a seed. Also, what comes to perch on a tree? 
a bird comes to perch on a tree. This is the logic of nature. But today, we want to learn the spiritual meaning. So let's take a look. The spirit dwells in an inner person, which grows from the seed, the word of God. This is how we can find the answer. In the logic of nature, the bird perches in a tree. The spiritual meaning is when a spirit dwells with an inner person who has been reborn with the seed. Now, we'll take a look through the word at how a tree is like a person. We'll go to Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 7. In Isaiah 5 verse 7, God's people are described as a parable like a vineyard. In that vineyard, what are the plants or the trees? What do they represent? They represent the men of Judah. How does the word describe people? People are described as plants and trees. It says that these people, who are like trees, are then judged. In Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 14, it says, I'll make my word in your mouth like a fire. In the place where there is judgment from the word, like fire, there is God's people. These again are people represented as trees and then being judged. By fire, trees are being destroyed. But in the word, it's the people who are judged. So, through the Bible, we've seen that trees can refer to people or a person. It's not the outer person, but the inner person. We've just examined the meaning of tree. But a tree grows from a seed, right? In the Bible, there are two types of spiritual seed. This is because there are two fathers giving these two types of spiritual seed. In other words, there are two types of spirits giving these spiritual seeds. And since there are two types of spiritual seed coming from the spiritual world, there are two types of trees. Let's examine and distinguish between God's tree and Satan's tree. First of all, there's God's tree from God's seed and Satan's tree from Satan's seed. 2,000 years ago, Jesus said, I am the true vine. And the branches attached to Jesus were the 12 disciples. God's tree is a true pastor, like Jesus, and the organization attached to Jesus. The true pastor and the organization are God's tree. If you look at a tree, there are branches, leaves, and fruit. So, the pastor and the organization with the pastor are God's tree. On the contrary, what kind of pastor is Satan's tree? Of course, it's a false pastor and the organization with the false pastor. We've just examined how there are two trees because of the two types of seed. Now, we'll take a closer look, verse by verse, at God's tree. In John chapter 15, verse 1, Jesus says, I am the true vine. There's one word here that can't be ignored. What is that word? It's the word true. Jesus was the true vine, correct? The reason why Jesus is described as the true vine is because there is also a wild vine. There are 12 disciples with Jesus. In John 15, verse 5, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. And these branches were the disciples. This true vine 
has 12 branches because 12 disciples were with Jesus. God's tree has 12 branches. There are also leaves, and it bears fruit. In Ezekiel 47, verse 12, there's a mention of healing leaves. If a tree is a person, and branch is a person, then a leaf can't be a physical leaf, right? A leaf is also a person. A person described as a healing leaf, because in the Bible, there are those who are physically ill and spiritually ill. Those who are spiritually ill are those who cannot see or hear the word. If those people are guided by the truth, then they'll be healed from their spiritual illness. Healing leaves are those who guide people who have left the truth to come back to the truth. They are evangelists whose duty it is to evangelize. The leaves are now working to bear fruit. In James chapter 1, verse 18, it says there are first fruits that have been born through the word of truth. As leaves work to produce fruit, evangelists evangelize to people. Again, as leaves work to produce fruit, evangelists evangelize to people. Also, there is fruit that comes out of the pastor's mouth. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 2, it speaks of the fruit of his lips. The fruit that comes out of the pastor's mouth is the word. Again, the fruit that comes from the pastor's mouth is the word. We have to think about something else as well. Jesus is the true vine, correct? Also, in John 14, verse 6, Jesus says, He is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, who had life, is like a tree, and is now understood as the tree of life. Also, this tree of life has 12 branches, just like the way there were 12 disciples. In Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 to 2, there is also a tree of life with 12 branches. Then, the words of Jesus are the fruit of the tree of life. Eating the fruit of the tree of life is our path to heaven to live eternally. The correct understanding of God's tree is the true pastor and the organization attached to that true pastor. We've examined God's tree, so now let's look at Satan's tree. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 31 to 33, the enemies have a vine, but their vine is the vine of Sodom and from the fields of Gomorrah. There's no difficulty there, but now the wine from that tree is the venom of serpents, the deadly poison of cobras. So, the enemy's vine produces wine, but the wine is the venom of serpents, the deadly poison of cobras. The vine is like the serpent, and the wine is the deadly poison. The serpent is not God's animal, but the enemy's animal. If it is serpent, that is the vine. This vine is not the true vine, but the wild vine. The reality and location of Satan's vine is clearly shown in Daniel chapter 4. In Daniel 4, verse 22, 
the Babylon king has a dream and sees a large tree. This tree has abundant fruit, providing food for all, and shelter for the beasts of the field. Because he has no idea what the tree was, he wanted to know the answer. In verse 22, it says, You, O king, are that tree. The Babylon king is the tree. So the Babylon king, being a tree, isn't difficult to understand. But, if we understand where Babylon is, and who the king is in today's spiritual era, we can know the reality of this tree. When we look at Revelation 18, verse 2, what kind of nation is Babylon in today's spiritual era? It's become the home of demons. Who is the king of this home of demons? The king in the home of demons, is a king-like pastor. The Babylon king is the pastor of the home of demons. The pastor of the home of demons becomes a tree. Now this tree is Satan's tree, also called the wild vine. In the Bible, this tree is called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 2,000 years ago, who was this wild animal, this serpent, the snake? In Matthew 23, verse 33, Jesus calls the teachers of the law and the Pharisees snakes and brood of vipers. 2,000 years ago, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees were the wild vine, and the mixed teachings coming from their mouth was the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Eating that fruit was the same as killing one's soul. The way to heaven 2,000 years ago was to hear the words of Jesus, which was the fruit of the tree of life. And the way to hell was hearing the words of the Pharisees and Sadducees, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If we were to grasp the meaning of Satan's tree, it is the false pastor and the organization attached to the false pastor. So, we've examined... the meaning of the tree, and the two types of trees. Now what is left is the meaning of bird. This is the meaning of bird. The characteristics of birds are simply the ability to fly around and perch on trees. So a spiritual tree is not an outer person, but the inner person who has been reborn with the word then what is this bird that enters an inner person? It's the spirit that comes down to dwell. So the meaning of the parable of bird is spirit. But in the Bible, one must distinguish between the two types of spirit. There's God's spirit and there's Satan's spirit. Looking at the parable, it's God's spirit, God's bird, and Satan's bird we must first take a look at God's bird. If you look at Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, a dove doesn't descend on Jesus, but the Spirit of God, like a dove, descends on Jesus. Shall we review what we've learned so far? Jesus is the tree, right? And a bird perches on a tree, right? If you interpret this, the Spirit of God descends upon a true pastor. Just like how heaven was when a bird perched on a tree in today's main reference, 2,000 years ago, Jesus was heaven. And being one with Jesus was how one could become a person of heaven. Even today in Revelation 19, verse 17, there were birds flying in midair at the wedding banquet of heaven. These birds are spirits because they're coming to heaven. The correct understanding of the meaning of the bird from God is spirit. On the contrary, there's also the bird from Satan that interferes with God's work. In Luke chapter 8, verse 5, 
there's a bird that snatches away God's word. But in verse 12, it's not a literal bird that snatches away the seed. But who comes to snatch it away? The devil comes to snatch it away. The bird refers to the devil in this parable. But where will the devil's spirits gather? Birds perch in trees, right? Then don't you think demons will gather at Satan's tree? Where is Satan's tree? It's in Babylon, the home of demons. When these demons, Satan's birds, will gather at Babylon. That is why Revelation 18 verse 2, it says, It is a haunt for every unclean and detestable bird. That is how we recognize Babylon. It is the home of demons, and it is filled with evil spirits. The bird from Satan is an evil spirit, the opposite of the bird from God. The bird we need to receive is the bird from God. We've looked at the meaning of tree, the types of trees, bird, and the types of birds. Lastly, Let's examine the conclusion of these two types of trees, okay? The conclusion of these two types of trees. First, the tree of life is planted. A tree grows, and the spirit comes to descend on the tree. This tree is the tree of life because it grew from the seed of life. Jesus was the tree of life 2,000 years ago. Because the Spirit was one with this tree of life, Jesus was heaven. So, being with Jesus was the path to becoming a person of heaven. On the contrary, there is a tree that grew from the seed of death. The evil spirit descends on the tree that grew from the seed of death. In the Bible, there is no reference to Satan's tree, but there is a tree of knowledge of good and evil, which represents Satan's tree. The reality of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was the teachers of the law and the Pharisees 2,000 years ago. They were the reality of hell. Then, being one with the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, was to become a person of hell. So today, what do we need to do? There is a true pastor and a false pastor. Truth comes out of the mouth of a true pastor and lies from the false pastor. Then, looking at the parables, God's tree bears the fruit of life and Satan's tree bears the fruit of of good and evil. The tree of life bears the fruit of life, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil bears fruit of good and evil. In conclusion, we need to be able to distinguish between the true pastor and false pastor by their words. We'll take a look at what Jesus said about this concept in Matthew 7, 15-20. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do you pick grapes from thorn bushes? Or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. And a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus by their fruit you'll recognize them. It says, by their fruit you'll recognize them. We need to find the true pastor by listening to the truth, which is the fruit of the tree of life. Also, we must not listen to Satan's words, that is, mixed teachings. The reality of the tree of life 2,000 years ago was Jesus. The reality of the tree of knowledge of good and evil was the teachers of the law and the Pharisees. 
What do we need to do today? In the era of Revelation, there are two types of trees, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is judged. Should we be part of the tree of knowledge of good and evil that receives judgment? Or do we need to be part of the tree of life, whom God is with eternally? We need to become people of heaven by being part of the tree of life, born again through the seed of life. For this to happen, we must be able to distinguish the tree by their fruit. The only way to become a person of heaven is to be part of the tree of life and be born again through the seed of life. People must be born again through the seed of life, which is God's word, and become people of heaven. Therefore, please, let's become born again with the seed of life and become people of heaven. We'll end here for today. Next time, we'll take a look at the content of The Food at the Proper Time. The Signs of the End of the Age are recorded in Matthew chapter 24. Looking at that chapter, there is a faithful and wise servant who gives food at the proper time. Next time, we'll take a look at who the faithful and wise servant is at the time of the end and the food at the proper time. Please, don't forget any word you've heard today, but be believers who hear every word. We'll end here today. I sincerely thank you very much for listening. If one does not know the secrets of heaven, the parables, he will not be forgiven and will become a person on the outside. This era is not the era of speaking figuratively, but the era of knowing plainly. This is the time of harvest. Those who are harvested are the sons of the kingdom of heaven. Those who are not harvested and who remain in their churches are the sons of the devil. Let us become those who are saved by believing according to what is promised.